what we wanted. This is the moment, okay? Love it. Love it. No Love idea it. where we are. Yeah. Couldn't tell you. Morning campers, morning from a little town called Cropper's Bridge near the Botswana border in South Africa and we have spent the light night here on this campsite called the Big Fig Inn and the reason I'm telling you this is because it's very unusual where you spend the whole night on a campsite and you have the whole place to yourself and some of the nicest luscious green grass I've ever seen. We're going to try Botswana in one week which is unheard of. We're going to try and do it. We've got our little Hilux double cab. So with... far, what do you think of the uh, truck? So far, pretty good. It's a classic pickup. It's not the most refined, as you know. It doesn't have much power. But once it's running, it just goes. It's comfortable, soaks up all the potholes and bad roads. And so far, it's so good, I must say. So, pretty happy with that. But yeah, join us and uh, let's have a look at Botswana. <laughs> people making all that noise last night. <laughs> wow. Well, we've just gone through the border post and um, we got another stamp. It went quite smoothly. I'm quite surprised. So yay! <laughs> uh, a couple of stamps. Customs just waved us through and now uh, we're waiting to cross the bridge. And I take it this is Khrobles uh, Bridge. So there's a stop here for foot and mouth, so I think they're checking to see whether we've got any uh, fresh meats produce. Well, our fridge is empty except for a couple of beers. It's like a dip. I've never been dipped before. Welcome to Botswana, guys. That was very easy. 30 minutes through the border control. Easy as anything. We made it! Very Botswana! Here are the Makhari pans, man. Makhari Khari pans, actually. Wow, it's amazing. Nothing. Twenty-three cakes. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. What do we speak to? Yeah, you got to put it. Okay. Yeah, the 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 gate. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. We made it. Do you know what time it is? Time. Well, guys, Makhari Khari Adventure Camp. Amazing. Love it does its name proud, man. What an adventure to get yeah. here. There is no wow. signposting, there is nothing. Yeah. We, we, we didn't even have the GPS coordinates, so it wasn't even cheating with that. Cheating. 
You're following your nose, you're following tracks. Good, good job we nothing. were following Marcel's nose and not mine because I would have taken us all kinds of weird places. I can't believe there's nothing out there. There wasn't a tree, just some flat as you can Amazing. see and just grass and nothing else. And at one point it was getting very wet, a lot of quite water, deep. quite deep. And we we're thinking, hmm. And at one point there's like just water in front of us and the track leads right through it. I'm like, I don't know if we can do this, yeah. man. We better find another route. But hey, it's a salt pan. You just go around. And we found the, the track again. No sign post. <coughs> I think none. it's 60 kilometers yeah. into the wilderness, yeah. which is just fantastic. There's no phone reception, there's no electricity. We're in the bush bush. <laughs> We've got some salty water, yeah, apparently, which you can shower, and that's it. Yeah. And I wouldn't have it any other way, yeah. man. No, it's fantastic. But yeah, I think we earned this one. Yeah, we did. Cheers. Miller's time. <laughs> Check this mm. view. Right, so this is an adventure camp, right? Well, let me tell you about the place a little more in detail. There's no electricity. There's no running water. There's no cold beer because there's no electricity. The pool is empty, no swimming. Very basic showers. No lights at all anywhere. Obviously, there's no electricity. And you might think, well, what is so great about this place? I'll tell you what it is. You are absolutely alone in a completely secluded place and we have the place to ourselves again which is unusual I think. Dead quiet, can't hear anything except the birds and there's a couple of wild animals out there, some cattle, a couple of donkeys which started at 4.30 a.m. even though now it's still quite early in the morning and it's quite nice to be here just complete calm there's just nothing going on that's why you come here it's primitive it's not much here but that's the reason you're here right this is Africa this is why you travel these long distances to find these little places little gems I've read a lot of reports online that this place is maybe not that cool some people don't like it it's probably too primitive I don't know we love it this has been the best place we've been so far a highlight of any travels we've done, I think, personally. We sat outside last night and there was this blanket of stars, the Milky Way, the whole lot. It was just fantastic and not a sound. This is where we spent the night. Very basic tent. Two single beds, but it's got all the bedding you need. They even give you some towels, which is nice. Um, apparently we weren't expected yesterday, so they hurriedly made up the bed while we were here, which took them like 10-15 minutes, which was really nice. My alarm is going off now, we've been up an hour already. I'm blown away, it is so remote, so beautiful, such a sparse landscape, but somehow the local people are able to live here, um, raise their cattle, it's, wow, respect, it's absolutely What I don't see around here is any litter either. Yeah. So that means not many people live here. Yeah. And that's all the better for it. Yeah. Nobody here. Actually, we just just keep the secret. Yeah. Don't tell anyone. So we, we, we're not telling you where this is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on the map. <laughs> yeah. I thought they were done. Oh, bonus bin, man. <laughs> the pan's going forever, man. Longer than you think. 
looks like that sick. They live here. I mean, what a place to live. It appears we have returned to civilization. Morning guys, morning from Maun, Maun. This is a campsite called Akavango River Lodge. Thank okay. you. Uh, once again, we're all alone. I can't believe this. This is what the lodge looks like. Looks quite uh, typically Botswana with not much grass around. There's a nice uh, pollution block, it's quite new. Um, this is the older one. It's got a bit of character. This is the washing up place, ladies, gents, all very typically African, basic, but it all works. And I like this sign here, which means there's been a drought in Botswana this year, with not a lot of water. Normally there's a river down there and um, the river flows the whole year. This year it's dry as anything, so they've decided not to water their plants, keep it a bit more shabby. They said people don't uh, appreciate that, but that's the way it is, man. What do you want to do? Rather have a green lawn and no water? Morning, everyone. Um, we have now spent three nights um, on the road, and uh, yesterday we had a, uh, the salt pans was absolutely spectacular, but it did result in a couple of mud issues for us. And uh, the sensor, well, we think it's a sensor, um, is not working for the, or well, the speeder is somehow not working anymore. So we need to go back into Mon to Mon, Mon, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, to get it checked by a, uh, someone who can plug it to the electronic system. Give us our landy any day. <laughs> there are no electronics. None of this stuff that can, you know, go wrong. It, it, it seems a bit tougher than the Hilux, but you know, the, um, Africa seems to run on Hilux. So it, it's a good car. It's probably just a little silly sensor, something or other. <laughs> oh, you gotta love Africa. Especially they seem to herd themselves. It's peak traffic hour. You don't see people accompanying them. They just yeah. do their own thing. That's a lot of mud, man. I didn't realize how much mud is in there. So we're kind of forced to clean the car and see if that helps the engine light. We haven't uh, got into the park yet and we stopped to uh, um, get the drone footage out but I don't know if you can see behind me there is an elephant. The elephant count. Mm -hmm. There were there were three 
Where did we first came in? We saw another one now, and here's another two. Bats. So cool. I love Ellie's. They're such amazing, amazing creatures. Second route. <laughs> this is from all the bouncing around in the car. This one kind of blew its lid and exploded all its contents into the box. I'm busy pouring the rest of it into another one that had also leaked. The caps didn't come off, but it's yeah, still yeah, kind of... Leaked. So I've taken the caps off, I'll we'll put the caps back on this one. Very bumpy yeah. road. I can put it in the fridge and uh, drink it later. This place is incredible. There isn't a fence. There's a giraffe here, there are wildebeest, um, there are zebras. They're all right here. It doesn't really get much wilder than this, does it? We had this little Garmin, it's about this big. You can hardly see what's going on on the screen. And would you know, we got lost again. We ended up in some kind of side road loop, which was heading out around the swamp areas, um, which is about 30 kilometers down that way. And we couldn't get further because the roads were flooded. So we had to go back and backtrack ourselves and come up back up to the main road and we eventually made it here which is also an experience in itself I mean this is our campsite this whole thing and we thought no this is for like five six people but no this is just ours alone this is campsite number six that little road there on the left there is the ablutions number seven is right there and it's really luxurious having the whole place yourself. There's nothing here, no Wi-Fi, no cell phone reception. You're cut off. Very primitive, in inverted commas, and it's lovely to be here. And we've just enjoyed every minute of being in Botswana in itself, and I can highly recommend you guys coming out and just having a really nice time. You need a 4x4. You definitely need a 4x4 to get here. Um, there's no hard paved roads, there's nothing but sand, very deep, soft, beachy sand actually. And uh, yeah, it took a long time to get 46 k's, I think we did about 3 hours, and then we got lost, so it was about 4 or 5 hours. But loving it all the way. So tonight, our ode to the vegans. That's the vegan section. Quick run steak. I know. Tell me down below. But hey, cheers guys. Really great to be here. And there she is. What a night we had. We heard hippos, elephants. There was an elephant grazing right over here. I think just over there. 
about 2 a.m. Fantastic place. Um, this is about 10 campsites, as I said. So there have been about five or six cars departed already this morning. Although you wouldn't know it because it's such a great big campsite. I mean, look at that, all that space just for us. So now our destination is Chobi. To the Savuti camp. So we have another six hours in the car at least. And this morning, my flip-flops, I left them here at the ladder. And this morning there was just one and the other one was missing. Yeah, it was gone. It was here, your other one. Yeah, it was moved. Uh. And the other flip-flop was found eventually uh. behind this log. And it's got teeth marks in it. Look at that. So I think someone was hungry. <laughs> but yeah, it also <laughs> proves there's a lot of wildlife around here trying to take your flip-flop. So when you come here, put them away. <laughs> Well guys, if you were thinking of coming here with a normal little hatchback, this is the main road leading up to the camp in Chobi. And in Moremi it's even worse, they use Sarah's Mini a 4x4. Fantastic, we haven't seen anyone in the last half an hour. I think we've seen three cars all day long. A lot of elephants, unbelievable. I would estimate over 100, 150. So if you're looking for elephants, you come here, come to Chobi. We've not seen animals either for the last half an hour. I don't know how hot it is, but it feels at least 45, if not 50. <laughs> it's probably something like 38, but still amazing. Absolutely amazing to be here. So we've still got to 29 case to go and we're doing 14 or 15 an hour so yes it's going to take another two hours Oh, 
this bear bear. Wow. How many k's left? Oh, I can hear it. The beer is calling our names. <laughs> How spectacular is this place? The different landscapes, it's, it's a phenomenal. Well guys, I guess you can tell um, I'm quite naked. It's done 160 kilometers and it took us seven and a half hours. So you do the math. It was great to be here. We're in the Chobe now. This is the Savuti River, Savuti Cap. Sorry for the wind. And I didn't think we'd ever get here. I didn't think I would ever get to experience this, which is like some kind of a... Uh, wow. I didn't even realize we had, had booked this place or I had organized this uh, from the start. And it's a lovely place. This is the Savuti River down there, which is... Um, Normally quite uh, full. Uh, it's a drought this year. The place is completely dry. Uh, there's a lot of uh, rain down south of the Savuti Marsh area, which is um, interesting that the rain kind of stops there, but here it hasn't rained for a long time. And this thing I found quite interesting. That is a common and, or garden water tap facility and it's actually the, against the elephants because they apparently had quite a problem with the elephants coming in here and abusing the situation who knows but I mean all these little stones are against the elephants standing on here and there is a little opening at the back there's a pipe at the front if you look in here yeah, there you go. It's actually a tap. Quick demonstration. Look at that. Uh, yeah, I know what you're thinking. That's not waste because these starlings come in here and they drink that as well. So we're helping the birds out a little bit. Look at this place. Giant campsite. You could fit. 10 mobile homes in here in Holland, something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very uh, small, exclusive, very um, remote. I can't believe how remote this is. Four campsites. Four um, camper vans like ours. And huge pitches they are. And in the background there you see the new ablution blocks. Or at least the ablution blocks have been made elephant proof which means they've had a big wall put around them because the elephants were quite a nuisance some time ago they used to come right in there looking for water even while they were showering the elephant trunks would come in through the window looking for water so now they've kind of made that a little bit inaccessible for them i don't know if it's a good thing look at this place very dry a lot of sand black sand a lot like beach sand, very fine stuff. We've just covered 60 kilometers of this stuff non stop. It's taking a long time to get here, and it's so worth it. It's so cool because it seemed like we were driving through kilometers and kilometers of nothing. But if you just sit here and you listen to the birds, just the birds, it's incredible what you can hear, what you can feel, what you can sense. There's nothing like Africa. So on this side of the camp we have our omelette making session in progress and on this side we have our toasties and you can see which the local wildlife would prefer. <laughs> it's quite keen on the toasties I think. No back off that's our food. How's it going dude? Ooh. You tell me. Oh, that looks amazing. Yummy.
deep is that water? Oh, look at the baby, baby. Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> it's a lovely welcome when you see skulls. <laughs> yeah. meters wide just, just pick a lane and go for it no one around no one in ahead of us no one behind us we passed two cars in the last 40 k's this is um, actually Chobe forest reserve which is north of the Chobe national park which we've just come through I'm assuming it's all a similar kind of bush as you see out here, uh, it could be dubbed a sand forest. I mean, there is just beach sand or very soft desert sand everywhere you look. And we've been traveling through that stuff for the last two days, I think. Part of our goal for coming to Botswana is we wanted to experience the remoteness. Uh, we live in Europe and there are so many people and it's so busy and, you know, there's always just lots and lots of, of, of everything, you know, lots of buildings, lots of cars, lots of people, lots of, it's just so busy um, that we really wanted to enjoy this remoteness and Botswana is, is fantastic for that. Um, seeing the animals was a, is, is a bonus for us, uh, that's not the main reason why we came here. We came here to really experience this vast, vast, vast lands of na nature. Um, and, and it's not touristy, which is my my best thing. You know, the, it still feels very authentic. Um, and then you can get to drive in places like this, and oh, love it. Mr. Geezer, it's no place. A couple of locals just passed us. First car we've seen in a long time. Uh, they look South African local dudes. They're more used to this road than we are. Border town, man. This is where Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana connect. Quite keen to see what goes on in here. Guys, welcome to Chobe Safari Lodge. Look at our campsite. It's the exact opposite of what we had yesterday. We can, like hardly, get, step. We can hardly get the tent open in it, and it's very, very cozy. However, when you see how you get into this place, you will understand. And I've never had an experience like this at a campsite where you get welcomed in this way. Yeah, this is not really camping, is it? Look at it. Chobe Safari Lodge on the Chobe River. Fantastic place. When we came in yesterday to the campsite, we were asked to check in at the reception of this place. And uh, they do a very formal, uh, very professional uh, check-in. They give you a little glass, like a champagne flute, of fruit juice and a little um, face cloth, like a little wet cloth to freshen up a little bit. Very cool. 
I've never had a reception like that at a camping ever. And as a campsite uh, guest, we're allowed to use of the pool. We can go to the restaurant. Just fantastic. And this place is awesome. After the dryness we've seen, look how much water there is around us. The Toby River, man. Oh my word, I can't believe this. <laughs> no way. I say I don't bring you to nice places. <laughs> Wait. Marcel organized this whole trip all by himself and everything has been an actual surprise but wow and uh wow I'm, I'm, I'm actually a little bit speechless yeah. oh. Amazing, oh my god I can't believe we're here. But then I would say, I got nothing, man, I got nothing. This is a way to get up in the morning. Look at this place. A little table right at the edge of the water. I don't know if you can see in the background there. That apparently is Namibia, across the channel from the Chobe River. In the background you see all those huts there, which is really cool. And I don't know if you heard the story about the island we went on a cruise yesterday around um, that island over there, which is called Sedudu Island. How are you? Good. Are we all good and strong? Mm -hmm. Grey body. That's your long tawed lapwing. Long tawed lapwing. And there was a dispute between Botswana and Namibia about who owns the river, uh, the island, which is about two kilometers long and a kilometer wide, which is situated right in the middle of the Chobe River. And there was a dispute, and Namibia wanted it, the Botswana wanted it. And it came to a head when they went to The Hague, to the Court of Justice, International Court. And they measured the depth of the channel, and the channel going to the right, which is part of Botswana, is deeper than the channel uh, between Namibia and the island, which means the deeper channel is the river, and the shallower channel is actually like a tributary, a stream, which means, in effect, the island belongs to Botswana. I may have got that the other way around, something to that effect, but the, the, um, the ruling stands. So now Botswana has planted their little flag there, just to remind everyone, it is Botswana territory. And they've actually left this as part of the Chobe Game Reserve, which means hippos are there, all the wild animals, which is a lot more eco, in my opinion, than what Namibia wanted to do, which was just um, put up uh, sugar cane or some kind of uh, crops, rice paddies or whatever. So this is a really cool, a little bit of a history um, between two countries in Africa. Uh, there's no war going on, it's all friendly. There was a dispute going on about the island. It's just lovely being here. Look at this. It is now quarter to nine in the morning. It's getting hot already. In the land of land cruisers, a land rover. It just fits in so much better. Look at this. Just buckies everywhere, pickups. A lot of guys doing the same thing we are. But basically, there's only guys you see on the road are similar vans to ours. So it's nice to see something different. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a landy girl, through and through. They're my favorite cars. But it was fun trying something different. That, that was the idea, right? Now we know. Well guys, a totally enjoyable experience for the price of a campsite, which costs less than a pitch on the bay at Saint-Tropez, which is about 28 euros. You have access to one of the most really luxurious, uh, quite exclusive places. You've got the pool, the restaurant, the whole thing. You've got the boat drives. Very cool. If you want to come here on a budget, that's how you do it. Tried fish. And uh, 
DHL service point. Is it border to work? Zambia and Zimbabwe. Look at all these trucks. Here's a weird one. Suddenly the road got wider and it said airstrip ahead. Who's stopping you doing parking? <laughs> You're not allowed to park on the side of the road. Maybe this is some kind of um, runway. Holland was flat, look at this. Because <laughs> you're just close. Can you turn around, please? Mind you. <laughs> really, there. Trying to get all the mud out of the wheels. It's what? On the road, yeah, it's not balanced anymore. And uh, the lamb and the sausage we had to hand out, uh, give back. It's not allowed to give, because the foot mouth problem is on that side. So you can take meat from that side, that way, but not the other way. So, there we have it. At least we won't get mad cow disease now. <laughs> Ellie's right there. Oh my word, wow. That is cool. Oh, you can see why they call this elephant sand. Yeah. <laughs> There's elephants and there are sand. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, that's being rebuilt because the Ellie's destroyed the last one. You don't mess with the Ellie's, but they're all here, which is awesome. I think they're one of my favorite animals. Magical. Guys, check it out. We made it through the night. It is an incredible experience. No fences here at all. Everything is open completely. While we're in our sleeping in our roof tent on the back of the van, these elephants were walking around the camp. I think looking for water. Uh, they're right next to the car. You can't even hear them. They're so silent when they walk. You can actually smell them ahead of that. You can hear them. Sometimes they make a little sigh with their trunk. It was really amazing. If you have something about elephants, this is a place to come to, you know, Elephant Sand. Fantastic place. It's just wild. It's just open.
It's even Christmas in Africa, man. It's absolutely incredible. Um, to be to be able to observe and just watch and just experience these herds of elephants just being themselves. It's just <laughs> such a beautiful place. Um, they have expanded it apparently quite recently, we heard from someone else. Um, I hope it works for them. They haven't expanded too much. <laughs> Um, you know, from, from what we've seen, it's, it's absolutely stunning. And I hope it stays that way, because this is a really, really special, special experience. If you can do it, do it. <laughs> Last leg of our uh, Botswana trip. What do you think? A nice bit of gravel, yeah. We're right near the border now, the Mbopo River is not far. And we are going to stay on this side of the river. <laughs> uh, it's about 25 k's to the camp. Happy birthday, my dad. Happy and it's a lot of smoke. <laughs> and we don't know what we do. I can't even see anymore. But you know what? It's Africa. Well, morning, guys. We are still in Botswana. This is our last morning. We're busy packing up, getting morning. the car packed. And across the river there is South Africa, but we have to travel back about 30 k's to the main border post there and then cross and then back to Joburg. Uh, this is the campsite called African Ranches, which is uh, quite a weird little place because you travel down this dirt road, which looks like a very what farming kind of area and you think okay it's over now, the bush and all of that, but then you could here and you're right on the river. Normally there's hippos here. The water level is very low and this campsite is very small. There's like just another one vehicle but you can get maybe five or six vehicles in and that's it. Uh, we have the ablution block as we leave Vic to finish off the work while I pretend I'm working. Here's a washing up area and uh, everything's here for you. They even give you some soap which is quite nice. A little bit of green. Here is the smallest blue block I've ever seen, ever. Looks like one ladies and one men. And uh, yeah, it's quite quaint. So in here, the loo, nice big shower. They even give you towels for your shower, which is unusual, which is cool. So yeah, very basic, but it works. Back across the river, man. Not much water in here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, oh, it smells good. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Here's your black, black Zalawi trucks. <laughs> well, 
Well guys, we made it. We're back on uh, dry land, which is South Africa for us. <laughs> uh, we've just come through the border post at Botswana. It took us about 40 minutes, I think. Most of it was just waiting in line to get forward so they can just check the car and all the trucks. There are dozens and dozens of trucks waiting to go in and coming out. It's a real choke point. But we made it through and now we are heading back to Joburg, back to uh, civilization because we've been off grid now for a week what we can term as off-grid and I'm unbelievably happy uh, it's a fascinating country it's a beautiful country it's just so remote and there's not many people around and that was just what we were looking for and there are a lot of highlights and we're still busy trying to um, what's the word process everything and we've got hundreds of pictures a lot of video and it's just been a fantastic time and a couple of highlights were the Makhari Khari Pans, which uh, if you can, go and visit those one day. We had the place to ourselves, nobody around, very remote, not a tree in sight for miles, flat as anything. A lot of mud that we had to drive through, we were just following our little navigation and it took us straight through the pans by mistake. And that was just a fascinating experience as well. And there's nobody around for miles, there's no phone connection, we're totally off grid. The nearest guy we saw was one guy on a horseback uh, looking after his cattle and for the rest, nothing. Moremi Forum Game Reserve, um, we booked a campsite there at Third Bridge. I had no idea what to expect but we actually ended up in the Okavango River Delta area which was fantastic. We got totally lost on those sandy tracks because there's not any signage at all. You just have to find your way around. We found some swamp areas, we saw a lot of hippos, a couple of elephants around and at night you sleep in an open camp which is unfenced and you hear these animals eating in the marshland around you, you could hear an elephant, a couple of hippo and it was just totally wild. You can drive for hours and you see a couple of cars and nothing else and you feel really remote and isolated which was what we came for and we succeeded and I didn't realize Chobi was part of the plan too because we've been to Kruger Park dozens of times growing up. Vic and I have been there so many times we know what to expect in Kruger but Chobi was always this like halo above everything else I didn't think we'd ever get to see that you know it's something like an aspirational thing. Now we were there we've been there we know what it's like a lot of sand a lot of slow progress a lot of very dense uh, foliage so you don't see much Elephant can disappear within 10 seconds. You won't even see them if they move off the road. Um, yeah, love it. It was great. Good experience. Over too quickly, obviously. We could do two or three more weeks. I love the camping experience. The car we picked is the Toyota Hilux because one thing, um, budget was a big thing. This is one of the cheaper ones. And the second is Africa was built on the Hilux. So we thought, let's try that. Uh, next time we'll do a Land Cruiser, something a bit taller. There's some of these latches on the canopy at the back and I've given myself a dozen more dents in my head. We loved every minute of it. I would, um, I would, uh, I would say come and visit. <laughs> loved every, loved every minute of it. Catch you next time guys. Thanks for watching man. This has been a really, really good experience.